Hey, good morning once again, options traders. Well, I got a really good question from one of our traders asking, what is an equally weighted index? And you're starting to see these pop up a lot in the markets, these equally weighted indexes. And he was just asking, what is it? Why would you use it? And when is it a maybe more appropriate measure to follow? Well, there are really three basic types of indexes that you'll see in the markets. There's one that's called a market capitalization weighted or a market cap weighted. Sometimes you'll hear it called a market value weighted index. And this would be, for instance, like the S&P 500. There's also what's called a price weighted index, such as the Dow. And then we have the equally weighted index. And this would be, for instance, the RSP. That's the ticker, but it's the S&P 500 index that is just equally weighted. So if you wanted to track that, you just type in RSP, just like you would SPX into your browser, and it will show you the S&P 500 on an equally weighted basis. So what are these three types of indexes and how do they work? Well, to answer that, let's go over to an Excel spreadsheet. Okay, so here we are into an Excel spreadsheet and I have an example of each of these three indexes. Let's start with the market cap weighted. Now, to keep things simple, we're just going to assume three stocks, A, B, and C. As I mentioned, a market cap weighted example would be the S&P 500. So in the real world, we would have like 500 stocks. Technically, there's about 504, I think, now if you count some of the B and C shares. But essentially, you would have a list of 500 different tickers that you would have to go through these calculations on. So here's the way that a market cap index would work. We're going to start off with today's price. And let's say that stock A is worth 200, stock B is worth 100, and C is worth 20. We're going to compare these in different fashions. That's what the different weighting schemes are. But we have a future price. A is now worth 250, B is 120, and C has fallen to 18. Now this future price could be five minutes from now, could be six months, could be a year from now. It's just some date in the future. For this example, let's just assume that we're taking these prices one year later. Next, we need to know the shares outstanding. We've got 100 for A, 200 for B, 300 for C. Of course, in the real world, these are going to be measured in millions or billions, but we've got some numbers, but just to keep them small, those will be our shares outstanding. So what's the value of the index today? Well, the way that we find out today's value is we take today's price, 200 times the shares outstanding, 20,000. We do that for B, we also get 20,000. For C, we get 6,000. We add those up, we get 46,000. We do the same thing for the index in the future. So one year later, the stock has risen to 250. For stock A times 100 will give us 25,000. Stock B is worth 120 times 200 or 24,000. C is worth 18 times 300 or 5,400. So if we add these up, we get 54,400, we divide this by the starting value, and we get 1.18. So it means that the index has risen 18% from today, and let's say one year from now. Most of the time your indexes are just as a convention multiplied by 100, so our index would be valued at 118, or 118.26 if we went out more decimals here. Now also when an index is first listed, they will usually take this number, whatever it works out to be, and just give it an arbitrary value of 100. And that way it becomes very easy to value it. If it goes from 100 to 118, we know it rose 18%. But that would be a market cap weighted index, such as the S&P 500. Now, one of the interesting things about a market cap weighting scheme is that you do not need to adjust for stock splits. Notice if stock A split two for one, the price would get cut in half from 200 to 100, but the shares outstanding would double from 100 to 200. So this value would not change. And so the index values would not change. So for the S&P 500, there's nothing you need to do other than just track the shares outstanding and the prices. Okay, so what about a price weighted scheme? We're going to take these three stocks. Now again, this is something that the Dow uses. And there's a lot of reasons why it's not a good way to look at an index. 
Part of the reason that Charles Dow did this is you have to realize this was back in the late 1800s when there were no computers. This was all done by pencil and paper. And so they just added up. There were 30 stocks in the Dow, as there are today. They would just add them up and divide by 30. So in our simple example, we have three stocks, again, worth 200, 120, respectively, today. So what Dow would have done, or any index that is a price-weighted index, is to add up these numbers, just let's say the closing prices of these stocks, divided by three. Then we do exactly the same thing in the future. So again, this could be the next day's closing price, could be 10 minutes later, but we're just going to assume it's one year later. These are the prices of these stocks. We add them up, we divide by three, we get 129.33. The index says, take this valuation, 129.33, divided by 106.67, we get 1.2125. And again, as a matter of convention, we multiply by 100. So if we use these same stocks under these same scenarios, we would actually have an index of 121.25. So in this example, it came out just a little bit higher than our market cap weighted. But depending on the performance of these stocks and depending on the valuations of these stocks, price weighted indexes are far more influenced by the price of the stock rather than by the market cap weighting. So this is again why a lot of times traders really shouldn't look at the Dow to see what the market did. It really just shows you what the Dow did. Okay, and finally the equally weighted index down here, which is really what the question was about. We're going to take these same stocks. We've got these prices. Here are the future prices. And what you do with an equally weighted index is you assume that you have a fixed dollar invested into each stock. Mathematically, it makes no difference. I'm just, to make it easier, I'm going to use $1,000. We could use a dollar. You could use a penny. It doesn't matter as long as it's equal among all stocks. So if you invested $1,000 into stock A when it was trading at 200 bucks, you would own five shares. If you put $1,000 into stock B at 100, you would have 10 shares. And if you put 1,000 bucks into stock C at 20 bucks, you would have 50 shares. So notice that you have invested $3,000 total. What we do next is to say, what is the value of this portfolio? So now we're just going to say, well, five shares times the 250 future price would be 1250. 10 shares times the 120 future price would be worth 1200. And 50 shares times the $18 future price would be worth 900. So our portfolio would be worth 3350. So once again, the index is going to take this final value, in this case, 3350, divided by our, our starting point of 3000, we get 1.12. And if we multiply by 100, we get, it's actually showing 111. That's just because we've got more decimals. There we go. So you can see the index would be at about 111. So that's because it's taking an equal amount of money invested across different shares. So there's really three different ways of looking at markets and to look at performances, but when should you consider using, let's say, one over the other? Well, that's another good question. And as a basic rule of thumb, use a market cap weighted index if you're looking at something that invests in the market, or you're just trying to say what did the market do or you consider yourself an investor who invests in just the overall performance of the market that's when you should be investing in a market cap weighted index or even just looking at these as a reference to see how the market did so this is where you might want to use the s p 500. on the other hand price weighted indexes are used by investors who allocate money across stocks according to their price not a very good scheme, but a lot of people do it. And they'll say, for instance, well, this stock is 200, so that's really expensive. Let me just buy five shares. But this stock down here trading for 20 bucks is fairly cheap. Let me buy 100 shares. And a lot of people do that. It's not really, again, a good idea. But people will, and if that is the type of allocation you do for your portfolios, then you might want to look at a price-weighted index or possibly even invest in that type of index, such as the diamonds. And finally, equally weighted indexes are appropriate for investors who invest equal dollars among stocks. And a very strong argument 
can be made for doing this. So this is where the RSP comes in. That's the S&P 500 Equally Weighted Index. So if you're trying to figure out what the RSP is, why it's different from the SPX, hopefully you have a better idea and perhaps which one is better for you. And for anyone who'd like to learn more about the art and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course, Strategy Lab, and a technical analysis course. You can find it all at optionsa-z.com. Also, please join us on the Facebook trading group, Options A to Z, and you can find a link in the description below.